Greetings everyone! We've been talking about area symbology on our maps, and last time we were talking about using transparency to create area symbols. That can be a fantastic thing to do in certain circumstances, but we were also looking at a couple of the pitfalls and some of the trouble that transparency will give you if you're using it on your map. So we were looking at this hazardous area that we'd like to demarcate on this map, but we have this problem with the transparency that we're generating two different colors over the land and over the water. And the colors are kind of nasty and that's going to confuse our uh, legend anyway, so we need to come up with a different way to do this. Well, we can come up with many different kinds of area symbols, such as patterns, to designate different kinds of areas on maps. So what if we have this problem and we decide, hey, we don't want to have just a solid red square here because we need to be able to see the outline of the shore, but we don't want to use this transparency deal because of the different problems with the colors that it's giving us. So what are our other options? Well, some type of option is to use a pattern inside. We can create some kind of cross hatching inside to designate this particular area. So let me show you how to do that. I'm going to just make up some lines. So here is my object. I'm going to turn it back to 100% opaque and for the time being I'm going to throw on you know I go that I can go over here to swatches I've got a jet black swatch right here I'm going to click on that to get back to jet black and then go ahead and bump up the weight of my stroke what if I want to shade this in let's do that with hatching I'm going to pull out my line tool and I'm just going to create some different lines inside. Now what's really going to be important here is that these are all the same distance apart. I'm not being careful about that right now. I'm going to create one right here on the edge that's exactly that and I'm going to create one on that edge that's exactly that as well. And then what I'm going to do is select everything but not that outer box. I'm going to deselect that outer box and then use my horizontal distribute center to make sure that everything is lined up and that also makes sure because I drew in this line that you can't see that's sitting on top of the box it makes sure that this distance is the same distance as all of the rest of them. Now I'm going to turn this my weight down here a little bit uh, maybe two. I might end up wanting a few more bars uh, if I think I do I think I do. I'm going to go ahead and put in couple of more bars. Sort of it'll end up making a little bit denser pattern. So turn off the box, redistribute. Yeah, yeah, I like the look of that. Okay, so now turn off the box again. And if I really like that particular color red that I was using, then I could say this is hazard red and it's going to become the bars there. I'm going to turn off well, I got a couple of different options here. I could come through here and make that box. It'd probably do on an outline. Maybe I want the box to be outlined in exactly the same color red. Now there's my hazardous area, and probably what I'd want to do is group it. And then I could make something on the legend that has this particular hatching pattern. This sort of looks like it's a jail cell, which might be appropriate for hazardous area, but what if I want those to be turned around and slanting in one direction? That's probably what I'd want to do if I were creating this symbol. So I'm going to select everything and then not select that background box, turn that background box off. And then right click and say transform, rotate, I'm going to put these at 45 degree angle. Aha! Now I'm getting someplace. I can tell I'm going to like this better. I will need to drag this out a little bit to make sure that it's covering my entire box. And then, you know, I might need to add another row. Actually, what I'm going to do to make things a little bit simpler here, because I'm going to show you what I'm going to do in a moment, is just make sure that this bounding box is completely covered by my symbol right there. And what I want to do is make sure that the symbol is just inside the box. Probably, I hope you've been paying attention, you probably realize that what I'm going to do is use the Pathfinder tools in order to clip it so that it stays exactly inside my box. If you've been folding along, you probably want to go, oh, I bet this is a job for the Pathfinder tools. 
So I'm going to copy everything here so that, or excuse me, select everything here so I have the lines and the box. And it sort of looks like that what I want to do is intersect these. So I'm going to try that. Unfortunately, I get this error. The filter produced no results. Please select two overlapping paths. You think, oh, well, gee, that should work. I just want everything that's inside. Unfortunately, the Pathfinder tool doesn't work exactly like that. If I've got these two, and now I go over here and I intersect them, no problem, that's center, see? But that's because these are closed shape, and I have lines over here. So it's not going to work like that. So I've still got a bunch of different options here. I could go through and I could use perhaps scissor tool to go and clip all of these to make sure that they're exactly the way that I want them to be. But another option is to use to right click and say make clipping mask. And if you make a clipping mask, it'll mask everything that's underneath a particular form. So in order to do this, this box right here has to be on top of those lines. And I believe it is, arrange bring to front. If it wasn't, it is now. And now when I've got the lines and the box and I say make clipping mask, look at that. Now I just have that hashing inside the box. I had the box copied if I say paste in front. If I want the outline, now I've got the outline back. And I could group that. Just like that. And then move around this particular box. Alright, so that looks pretty good. That may be a perfectly good area map symbol for us to be using, but it does have a couple of different problems. Namely, what if I select it and then I start to expand it? Well, what happens is I'm dragging out and changing up the distances between the hatching there and turning it into a different symbol, actually. I would want to be sure that if I were using this particular kind of hatching to designate an area on the map, that every time I have this particular designation, it's exactly the same in every case. And plus, I want to be able to reuse this, make it uh, easier, make it more compatible with uh, different projects and across cartographers. So what you can do is actually create a pattern swatch that will hold that pattern and, and apply it consistently across any type of area or polygon you want to create. As it turns out, though, to create one of these very seamless hatches, you need to employ some advanced illustrator techniques. I've decided that I'm going to go ahead and show them to you, though, to introduce you to a couple of new tools, but then also to uh, give you this skill, because it is extremely common on maps to want to use some type of hatching. So I'm going to go ahead and show you this, uh, how to create this pattern in order to use it uh, on your map in a better way than trying to create it by hand every time. So if you go through this process and create a hatching swatch, you'll be able to use it uh, consistently on all of your maps. So the first thing I'm going to do is put in some lines for the hatching. How I'm going to do that is I'm going to take this one line and I believe we are going to use the two weight stroke. There we go. I'm going to show you that if I hold, if I get this selected and I hold down option Alt-Option here on my Mac keyboard, and I start to drag out. Well, if I drag out and hold down Alt-Option, it copies it. Do you see what happened right there? I'm going to undo that. So I've got this selected, and so I, if I just drag it, I can move it, right? If I start to drag it with the Option down, then it duplicates it. One more time, I have it selected. I'm going to hold down the Option key, and then I'm just going to drag over. Now I could get real specific about how the width that I want this hatching to be, but now I want to duplicate that line so that it's exactly the same distance apart with many, many other lines. In order to do that, there's a quick keyboard shortcut that you can use, Command-D on the Mac here, and since I have the last line that I just duplicated selected, if I hit Command-D, I can draw more lines and they will be exactly the same distance from the first one that I had drawn previously. So I can get this hatching effect going all the way across here very easily, make sure those are very evenly spaced. I do want to be sure that they are all aligned vertical center, so there we go. Now I've got the hatching pattern that I'm going to use. Again, I wasn't real precise about the distance between here, but hey, I'm just going to go with this particular one. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and put them at the angle. There's nothing wrong with having the straight lines, but you know what? I like having them at a 45 degree angle. I can go over here to twist, and if I hold down shift, then I get them exactly at a 45 degree angle right there. Now in order to make a pattern swatch that works to fill these things in, you want to make it out of a perfectly formed square. So I'm going to go over here to my rectangle and I'm going to say, hey, I would like to have a one, one and a half inch, let's see if that works, by one and a half inch square and say OK. And what's important here is that the square fits, whoops, that the square fits exactly inside your pattern. I'm going to use a slightly smaller square here and go 1.25 by 1.25 and then drag that on top. Okay, so now I've got that. Now as we said, what we really wanted to be able to do was select all of this and go over to our Pathfinder and then say uh, Crop or something like that. And that doesn't give us what we want. Let me come over here. I'll show you again. Let me make sure this is sitting on top. I'm just not getting it. It's just not happening. And that's because I've got these problems with the lines here. So let me show you this uh, advanced technique. I don't know if it's an advanced technique. This little option that you may not be aware of. I just want the lines. I just want those lines. And what I'm going to do is go to Object, and then Path, and then Outline Stroke. This is going to convert all of those lines into little bitty polygons with the width of the stroke weight that is on the lines. Let me show you. See those are lines selected with a particular weight stroke. I'm going to say outline stroke. Now they are all polygons. Now I can use the Pathfinder tool with polygons. So what I'm going to do is first of all I'm going to make sure that I have this copied and then go here to select all of those and now if I go to crop and I hit crop that's what I want that's trimming all of those what they were lines but now they're polygons down to the shape that I wanted to if I hit command F and go ahead and paste back in front you would see that now I have exactly what I was looking for I'm going to undo that so I just have the cross hatching now watch this I'm going to select all of that cross hatching and then go to swatches and drag that inside. Now I probably want to pull it down here inside my area symbols. Now I've created a pattern swatch that will help me use that exact same pattern, that hatching pattern, inside any particular area that I want to draw. I'm going to come over here, create something completely new. I want the interior to be filled with that particular hatching pattern and there we go. Now I've got that hatching pattern all over that rectangle and if I zoom, if I scale it, I'm not stretching the hatching pattern like I was doing over here. See the difference here? That stretches the hatching pattern. I don't want to do that. I want to apply the exact same hatching pattern no matter how large or small my hazardous area is. And plus, let me go out here and if I've got an irregular shape, I'm going to draw something like this. And now if I want to hatch that because it's my hazardous area, I'm going to apply my hatching and there it is. Now of course I can also copy and then paste in front and tell it, hey, let's put my edge around it if that's the effect that I'm looking for. So there might be my hazardous area. And then if I put that there, now I don't have the problem that I had that I'm changing up the different colors and the transparency when I'm trying to use transparency to do this. I've just got the hatching over it. And so if I can say this is a hazardous area, regardless of whether it's over land, over water, over whatever, I'm going to be able to uh, show that and show that very clearly on the map and then also in the legend. By the way, you can also use those Pathfinder tools. What if this hazardous area comes up just to uh, the water's edge here? Well, you might guess that you could use the Pathfinder tools and so forth, just like we've been doing to clip out this shape so that it follows exactly the same uh, line as the coast. I'd need to have a copy of the uh, landmass in order to do that, but then I could apply the cross hatching there and make sure that it came up to the shoreline exactly without overlapping it. 
So that's a little bit about cross hatching going on with the area symbols. Very useful cartographic technique. You can design your own. You can get some very complex uh, hatching in here, but I'll let you run with it. Go ahead and design your own hatching swatches and get yourself completely ready to uh, do some fantastic cartography. Mm -hmm.